Hello everyone and welcome back to another MRC chess game from the Hastings Chess Tournament from 1895. And in this chess game we have Harry Nelson Pillsbury with the white pieces and his opponent is also one of the important chess masters at the time, Adolf Albin. And this chess game happened in 1895 as you know, in the famous Hastings Chess Tournament. And we have seen many chess games of Pillsbury from this tournament. And he actually played stunningly beautiful chess at Hastings 1895. So this is also one of the one of the another chess games of Pillsbury from this tournament, which is pretty instructive. And let's see what happened in this chess game. Pillsbury, who has the white pieces, starts the game with e4. But had he played d4, Adolf Elvin would probably reply with d5, and if c4 he could play it e5. What is this move? Well, this is the Albin counter gambit. So this was the own gambit of Adolf Albin. So this is the usual setup, d4. Okay, so in the real chess game, Pillsbury pushed the e-pawn. He didn't push the d-pawn. So we didn't see Adolf, Adolf Albin's counter gambit. e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop out, a6, bishop back, knight to f6, and Pillsbury castled. Knight takes on e4, pushing the pawn, pushing the pawn again. Bishop goes back, d5. a5 by Pillsbury. So he wants to charge from the queen side. He wants to open up the position. And rook over, d takes on e5. Bishop to e6. So we have actually a pretty uh, classic setup from the Spanish game. a takes on b5, capturing back, and c3. So Fisbury can also use his bishop on c2, bishop to c5, knight out, black castled, bishop to c2, and exchanging, and we have rook to e8, b4 by Fisbury. Actually, this chess game is more interesting at the critical moment of this chess game, so I like to skip to the critical moment faster. So this is the critical moment. In this position, black plate, tempting bishop to g4. But actually, knight takes on h4 would be a mistake because of bishop takes on h7 and queen to f4. And actually, white is doing a very good job. So, vacating on g6 is not a good idea. What would you do in this position? Black played bishop to g4, which was a very tempting move. It is white to move. Well, Harry Nelson Pillsbury pushed the e pawn. And with this move, he is actually gaining some time, a very important time, a very important tempo. But actually, this was not the most spectacular move. But in this position, black captured back with the bishop, which was a mistake. Sometimes the most obvious move is the best move, and sometimes it is not. Capturing back with the bishop is the obvious move. Of course, if capturing back with the pawn, then simply capturing the bishop. And in this position, we have bishop takes on e6, but can you see why this move was actually a very bad mistake? Because this is actually allowing Fisbury to push the pawn and he has time to push his h-pawn. But in this position, what was the better move? Queen takes on e6 was actually the better move. Then bishop takes on g6, pawn takes bishop, capturing the queen, capturing the queen, and then knight takes on c7. So this is the continuation that we have, defending the pawn, attacking. So also, as you can see, black has two isolated pawn islands and defending all of them is not that easy. So we have this complicated endgame, but the position is for about equal. We can say that Harry Nelson Pillsbury would win this chess game after this position, or maybe he would, because as I said many times, Pillsbury was actually a chess genius. So in this position, he pushed the e-pawn, which was actually a pretty nice idea. So black captured back with the bishop and Fisbury is gaining some time. As I said, if capturing back with the queen, that would be a different story. But Albin played bishop takes. And after pushing the pawn, we have bishop to g4, another tempting move. But this was a great mistake. And this is actually losing. Can you see why this move is losing? Actually, in this position, after h5, going back with the knight, which looks passive, knight to f8, 
according to the ch computer chess engine, was the best move. But in this position, we have bishop to g5, again attacking the queen. And can you see what white plays here? Why bishop to g4 was a big mistake. Well, Hillsbury is sacrificing the queen. This is what he did. H takes on g6 and what a move. Well, the idea of Hillsbury is this. He is sacrificing the queen for two minor pieces plus the rook. Actually, that's a very good compensation for white. We have bishop takes on f3 and Pillsbury simply captured the g-pawn, g takes on f7, but we have queen takes on f7. Why not simply capturing back with the king and not losing the queen? Then simply capturing the rook with check, queen, rook takes on e8, and then knight takes on f3, and basically white has more than good compensation, white has two minor pieces plus the rook for the queen, and that's a very good compensation, White has a very strong attacking chances in this position. But maybe Albin should not, still he should not capture back with the queen. But in the real game, we have queen takes on f7. Knight takes on f7. King takes on f7. And then capturing the bishop. And what's wrong with this picture? Well, basically, Pillsbury is a piece up. <laughs> but in this position, this is very funny, actually. Can you see the best move in this position? Always look for in-between moves, critical and important in-between moves. What would you do in this position? Capturing the knight with the king. Do you think that's the best move? It's interesting because this was not a blitz chess game. Both players had many uh, minutes in their clock. It was not three minutes or five minutes blitz. It was classical chess, but in this position, all been incredibly captured the knight, which was the mistake of an amateur. So this is actually losing a piece. Well, the better move was actually bishop to e2, in between move, attacking the rook. So, okay, this is actually saving the bishop. After knight to g5, bishop takes rook, bishop takes on h7, moving the king and capturing on f5, uh, capturing on f1. And in this position, black is not a piece down. Black uh, has the exchange for two minor pieces. So white has the knight and the bishop for the exchange. And this is actually, uh, it's actually okay, but this is still losing. Probably white is still better, but at least not losing immediately. In the real chess game, king takes on f7 and Pillsbury simply captured the bishop and he is a piece up. It's interesting to see how the old chess masters, sometimes they play terrible. They make very obvious human mistakes and actually with those mistakes, we can learn. We can learn from their mistakes. So human mistakes, human errors is actually very important. As I said, we can learn from those mistakes. So, okay, king to f6, bishop to d3, basically Pillsbury is a piece up. So there is not much interesting from now on. Checking the king and Pillsbury is attacking the g-pawn. So black is defending, black is still playing, which is also interesting. So Pillsbury is a piece up, h5, but still, still actually white has to play precisely. Not every move is winning. Bishop to d4, and now Pillsbury is threatening checkmate. Rook to f6, rook to g6, capturing the rook, king takes on g6, and now bishop to e3, targeting the g-pawn, how to defend. It's not that easy, so pushing the pawn, Defending like this. Black is fighting with everything that he has. Trying to hold this position together. But it's not that easy now. The rook is coming for the attack. h4 checking the king. And we have king to f5. If king to h5, then bishop to g7 is a deadly move. Threatening checkmate. If checking the king actually, king goes down and still... Uh, Rook is coming, so defending is not that easy uh, in this position. So, okay, king to f5, and now rook goes behind the pawn. Fisbury plays the best best moves, actually. He plays precisely in the endgame, like a machine. Rook to e8, check, king down, threatening checkmate, so defending with the rook. And b5, Fisbury's pawns are marching. g4, 
What would you do in this position? Well, his berry checks the king, rook to f6, and we have rook takes on f6, and would you capture the rook? <laughs> well, if you would capture the rook, that would actually a disaster, a tragedy for white. Which is a very tempting move, but Pillsbury wisely first captured the pawn, which doesn't seem like much, but actually this is a life-saving move. After defending the rook, only then capturing the rook. So in this position, if capturing the rook with the bishop, then pushing the pawn in between move, and after king to g2, only then capturing the bishop, and actually you can't go for attacking this pawn because black is going to push the g pawn, and this is actually a draw. So incredible, but this is a draw. Okay, so this is why in this position uh, it was an interesting moment of this endgame. Fisbury didn't capture the rook with the bishop. He wisely captured on g4, f takes on g4. After so, if basically king takes pawn, then bishop takes rook. So after king goes back. Bishop takes rook only then. King takes on f6 and this endgame is losing. Pillsbury pushed the c-pawn and black had enough. Another one bites the dust against Pillsbury. Very impressive, very interesting chess game by Harry Nelson Pillsbury. Basically white is going to create a pass pawn and this king is far away for defending. So let me show you the possible continuation. King to g5. But white is creating a pass pawn and also the white king is defending very easily. Pushing the pawn and white has a pass pawn. And white king is defending easily and promoting a queen. Interesting isn't it? So another interesting chess game by Harry Nelson Pillsbury. Another important victory against an important chess master. After the Chigorin defeat, Pillsbury start to win game after game after game after game that happened after the Chigorin game and the chess world realized that this Pillsbury was not a slouch he actually had an incredible talent with only five years experience he was defeating all of his opponents so thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time with another interactive chess game from this chess tournament. So stay safe, take care and bye bye.